Excuse us. Pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. What's up? We got the drink. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. Hey, guys. Sorry I'm late. The bathroom here is nuts. Oh, my God. You made it. Yay. It's about time, Nathan. Damn. Shh. The movie's starting. I'm Mally Moore. I'm Dustin Ghost of Hollywood. <laughs> I'm Nathan Simmons. And you oh, God. <laughs> That's what I'm on his playlist. <laughs> oh, <laughs> fuck. I'm trying to find the on his set of his playlist endings. <laughs> Jolly good. <laughs> <laughs> that got me. Best Canadian accent I've ever heard. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Are you going to do the whole episode like that? <laughs> no. Please don't. Please, please don't. Please don't. Please don't. Well, 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 as I live and breathe. For real, I can't, I can't take it. I can't take it. Uh, welcome, everyone, to the show. Uh, we're just three men talking about men this week, right, boys? Oh, finally, finally, a show where three guys, three white guys <laughs> talk about pictures. Oh, uh, we got that broad out of here from last week. It's oh, just the mids boy. now. Uh, for legal reasons and for <laughs> emotional reasons, this is- We're riding that line, huh? This is a bit. <laughs> this is a bit. Yeah, it's just a bit, a bit of me talking about this movie with these, my two other men. Hey, <laughs> why don't we get a date, boys? Uh, welcome, everyone. Of course, uh, as you can tell by the episode title, we're talking about men this week. Yeah. That's right. We're doing it. Men. Mally, this is your pick. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I feel like you. You're, there is no rhyme or reason to your picks anymore. It's just like, yeah, fuck it. Let's t- talk about that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. But that's okay, because there's a lot to talk about with this one. I put this movie on the list before I had seen it. I just assumed it was going to end in a way. <laughs> just, I was like, I, I saw who the writer director was. I was like, and Adam. Yeah. Sure. And then I watched it and I was like, oh, fucking Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> yep, this counts. Yeah. yeah, it's an Alex Garland movie, so the ending is uh, challenging, and if you say that it's uh, a frustrating ending, then people yell it. At you <laughs> yeah yeah pretty much yeah but this is i would say this is the one that if you don't like mm. i get it i completely get why you wouldn't like this movie if you say you don't like annihilation you can get right the fuck out of here with that garbage talk i, I actually, come I actually on. don't like annihilation come that on. Much. <laughs> i think annihilation gets better with repeated viewings but it's not my fave for sure i think it's fine you guys ex machina crowd here i fucking love ex machina that's fair i like it too i do like ex machina i also love never let me go yeah which he wrote, he didn't direct. Yeah. But the thing about the thing about Ex Machina, uh, spoilers for Ex Machina, is the the main character is uh, a guy who is more concerned with uh, appearing like a hero than actually being a hero, sure. and it feels like Damal Gleason's character wrote most of this movie <laughs> <laughs> and Oscar Isaac dances. <laughs> See, I thought the whole point about his character in Ex Machina was, can I fuck this robot? Yeah, like, <laughs> I think that's where he was. His head was most of the time. <laughs> I mean, that's what I say when I see any robot. Yeah, it's a valid question. Any robot. <laughs> oh, Nathan. Uh, I hope that laptop's okay. So anyway, <laughs> we're talking about men this week. So did Nathan come over last night? Yeah, I got kind of weird. Oh, why? He tried to fuck my Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fellas, this is the second episode we've recorded today. So uh, uh, good luck. <laughs> yeah, brace yourselves. Yeah, not going to be our best work. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, this movie has a fucked up ending. Uh, I don't have a bit part. Don't <laughs> want right. Any of the props and silver lining, it ended. All right, see you guys next week. Bye. We're cashing in early. Though. We're getting out of here this week. But yeah, so men, uh, I'm Mally, I'm, thank you for picking it, I guess, because I did need a chance to, I needed a reason to rewatch this movie, and this was it. Mm-hmm. I'd say, yeah, did, it, did anyone see this in theaters? I did. Okay. I did. I tried. I ended up having to do, they, A24 did one of those screening room things. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I just did that. Right on. I did see this in theaters. I, Priscilla and I saw this opening weekend, mm-hmm. and man, it, the theater was empty except for two other people, mm. and it was me and Nathan. It was <laughs> it was two uh, older women, mm-hmm. and but the, both with Rory Kinnear's face. Yeah, it was the strangest <laughs> thing. But the theater we were at the is a theater that serves alcohol. Oh boy! So these women had uh, glasses of wine. Hell yeah, that's a party. So they were totally fine until the last twenty minutes of this movie, uh-huh. <laughs> where I'm not. It was the f- slightly funny but also incredibly frustrating because 
spoilers for the ending of the movie here <laughs> when the the repeated birthing start happening yeah the rolling birth as alex garland calls it the, oh. i literally could see the women in front of me swirling the wine in their glasses and making jokes like oh, i know that feeling and it was like <laughs> what when that was like the first birth and the next one happened and like honey don't even worry about it yeah. that's it's gonna hurt worse later than it does now and i'm like okay this is funny we get but it. we get it okay <laughs> <laughs> it was We've like, all given birth to Tanner from the Bond movies. It's fine. Uh-huh. It was it was like watching the Golden Girls in front of me just like ridicule this movie. It was like my <laughs> own personal mystery science theater with two uh, drunk wine moms. So it was fun. It's but kind of amazing. It was fun. Yeah, it, actually, I, I want that. I want that as a <laughs> bonus feature on the Blu-ray. <laughs> it, it did kind of alleviate things a little bit. Uh-huh. Because that ending is like, wow, yeah, that, yeah. It, that happened, I guess. Um, I, I, I should, yeah, this was a first watch for me this week. Mm. Well, I, I watched it twice this week mm. because I, I did want to give this a second shake. Mm-hmm. Like, it is... And I, I'm, I'm, I'm fully split on this movie in that I, I think they're split right down the hand. I, oh Jesus! Uh, <laughs> I, I fully think that there are masterful things about this movie, but I think the, the, the narrative raises so many questions that it's also not interested in fully addressing. Mm-hmm. I, I also think that there are. There are problems in uh, in casting and execution in certain parts of the film that is just I, I don't know. We'll we'll get into it. There yeah. are when this movie works for me, it is fucking unbelievable. Yeah, and when it doesn't work for me, I'm I want to pull my hair out. It should be noted, Nathan watched this movie twice this weekend. Uh-huh. He said, "Uh huh." You've officially seen it more than me because I refuse to rewatch this movie. <laughs> Fun. Oh no, buddy! <laughs> I took notes. The first time I watched sure. it. <laughs> sure. Like, I was five minutes in. I was like, you know, let me get my fucking notepad out. I just know <laughs> this is going to go my way. I, I feel like having rewatched it now. Yeah. This is for how I see it. Mm-hmm. This feels more like a first time director's film. Yes. Or like a student film that became a feature because the ideas that it's grappling with are so uninteresting because of how surface level they are. Right. Like, I get that the movie is men bad and here's why men bad. Well, it's it's not even just that. It's it's it is tackling the cycle of violence and the cycle of toxic masculinity, people passing it through time and generations. Mm-hmm. But the problem is that I I knew all of those things existed before this movie. It's like you're saying like it's not it's not really exploring those so much as it's throwing those ideas on the screen. Yeah. And and a lot of that I think what you're saying uh, is true because he wrote this screenplay 15 years ago. Yeah. And and when you read interviews with Alex Garland, uh, there's this interview with IndieWire where he says a lot of like, quote unquote, I think what I was trying to do statements. Yeah. So it almost feels like an older filmmaker trying to reconcile earlier ideas that he had. Yeah. And so what a lot of it comes out to are these statements of, well, my film is open to interpretation, but that interpretation says things about the viewer, not my intent. And what I want to know is what's your fucking intent? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like this, I got like similar vibes of like Mother in this, where it's sure. like- a-, a film that I truly hate. <laughs> see, I, I get why people hate it, but I do like it. Uh-huh. My whole point with it, though, is like it, it presents itself in a way where you can project any kind of argument you want on it, and it will be valid. Totally. Like, but- that's so uninteresting versus just making a statement. Sure. And when he is trying to do any kind of symbolism, it's so surface level. I like agree. her taking a bite of the apple, the forbidden fruit. Like it's so <laughs> just like last week's movie. <laughs> yes, it's so surface level. And it's I'm just kind of this is what I was I was saying off air. I might say something that sounds kind of incelly, but I'm just <laughs> so kind of tired of movies that are trying to preach and explain things to me that I already know. Sure. Like I liked it better with something like Promising Young Woman because I felt like it was presenting it from a different standpoint. Mm-hmm. But this is literally just, hey, you guys know men are bad, right? <laughs> and here's how men are bad. But I don't know. It just, it's so uninteresting right. to me. Well, and, but it is, I think this is a feat of filmmaking. Yeah. Like there are, I, I think it is gorgeously shot. It's incredibly acted. Yes. I think there are moments in this movie that, I mean, within the first 15 minutes of the movie, there were multiple sequences that made my heart jump into my throat. There are scenes towards the end of this film that had me squirming in my seat. Mm-hmm. But I, 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 I don't know... I both know exactly what he's saying and not sure why he's saying it yep. at the same time. Exactly. 
It's a very competent filmmaker. Yeah. And he's it, like you said, it does look great. It's, the performances are fantastic. But the, the weakest part here mm-hmm. is the plot. Yeah. It's just weak. And I don't know. This would make sense if it came out before Annihilation or, or Ex Machina. But sure. like the fact that it's just his latest thing. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It just it feels like a step backwards. I think the messages and the themes are strong. It's just the execution of those things don't don't entirely entirely hang together as a film. I suppose. Yeah. Um, Matty, what, what about you? Uh, what, what were your feelings about it? Um, no, I, the whole step backward thing is pretty accurate. Like it, it's. I don't want to. It's not a bad movie by any no, means. I don't no, think. I, no, I, but I agree. it it does feel like er, like early Alex Garland, yeah. not mm-hmm. you know post Ex Machina, post Annihilation. Yeah, Alex Garland. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was gonna say post Devs, but I actually never watched it. Mm. Yeah, I don't. It's. It's yeah, it's it's not bad. It's fine. Yeah, I I would say our consensus is probably this is a well made movie. It's a good movie, but it's just not. It doesn't really reward multiple viewings or mm. offer anything new, right? Yeah, that's kind of why I didn't like. I didn't rewatch it for this episode because uh-huh. I was like, I I don't know what I'm gonna glean from a second viewing. I honestly didn't get much. I'll say that I did pick up on a few things, like just physicality and 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 choices that were being made uh, particularly by by rory kinnear in this movie Mm -hmm. and that's that's kind of my other problem is we're seeing this story through uh jesse buckley's eyes and she sort of just becomes a non-character for the last 15 20 minutes of the movie she's just running and screaming and crying and and not really like that's probably my biggest issue with the movie yeah that feels like studio notes of like (laughs) you're making a horror movie she's got a be the screen queen. She's got to have a knife. Sure. She, you know, she's got to be running around a dark house. Like, I don't know. It, it, it was unfortunate that the movie just kind of devolved into that. And yeah. then, like you said, the rolling bursts. I don't know. But when I, I think when you're watching it on a second viewing, you're also picking up on more of the, not necessarily the symbolism, but like there are, there are so many microaggressions in the movie that yeah. become so much more evident when you watch it a second time. And we'll get into it, but like even small things like, Jeffrey won't let her help bring in the suitcases, so he gets them all in one go and complains about it. Yep, you yep. know, <laughs> yep. it's it's and that's the stuff that I find absolutely brilliant in this movie and unsettling and 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 sort of creates this this cage that is uh, getting smaller and smaller for her. Yep. And and I just I wish I wish the movie felt like it was. I feel like the ending isn't as smart as the beginning is. I agree, not nearly. Like that's that's a huge problem because it's like. You title your movie Men, Mm -hmm. and I already can get it by the trailer what the movie is going to be about. When this trailer came out, I said, hell yes. Yeah, no, it's Uh, a good good trailer, (laughs) but I'm like, I got it right away. I'm like, oh, she's taking a bite of the apple. This is the Adam and Eve. Oh, it's the original sin. Mm -hmm. Oh, men are are such a terrible problem. And I agree with a lot of these sentiments, Mm -hmm. but I'm like, by the time the crazy fucked up shit starts happening at the end of the day, it's only surprising to the protagonist and not to me, the audience, because- I know where the th- what the themes of the movie are, and I can see where they're going. Right. That makes sense. After seeing Rory Kinnear's face on all these different people, and then, of course, knowing that the movie's called Men, I'm conditioned to expect that by the end of it, we're going to see a bunch of wild shit, mm-hmm. like a man birthing himself over and over again, <laughs> because that's directly correlated back to what the theme of the movie is. It's also a bummer that there's never a moment where she acknowledges that they look the same. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing. That's the big question I had on this rewatch. I'm like, is this something that she's noticing and experiencing? And if so, why is she not questioning it? Or is it just uh, what I'm sure Alex Garland was trying to say, which is she's seeing all the terrible things in every different man. And that's what the representation looks like. They all look the same. And also working through her own guilt that's been like pushed onto her. But Alex Garland has said none of this is in her head. And so if it's not in her head, then what are we doing? Yeah. Are are we saying that she's, I mean, and I'm sorry, I'm getting way ahead of myself, but like, are we saying that this is like a manifestation of guilt and toxicity yeah. that's like given form? And, or am I, <laughs> a couple times in this movie, I literally thought to myself, am I stupid or is this a broken narrative? And I think both are true. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's just not committing to one thing or another yeah. and he's wanting it to be ambiguous. But that only carries you so far. Well, when we get into the stuff with the husband, I have a, I have a lot of thoughts about that as sure. well and how that, that sort of muddies everything. Yeah. And it's also just so because these themes are so surface level mm-hmm. and it's it's just so bland and vague at times. But that it's acted. They're, they're acting the hell out of this movie. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. I, like I said, the weakest part is is the plot yeah. and, and the themes, because it's like 
it becomes like a oh, English lit 101 class. Like <laughs> you're you're covering themes that I've already seen in another movie, like Mother or like Promising Young Woman or anything, anything like that. Or the shape of things. Or the shape of things. <laughs> Don't you fucking dare. <laughs> and I'm just like I said, I'm just to a point where I'm kind of tired of being preached at. It didn't go over my head that you dropped a shape of things quote early in the episode, Nathan, you <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> And it's this is not to pin all of this on to Alex Garland or mm. all onto this movie. Totally, it's, you know, I'm I'm kind of at the point now in 2023 where I'm on like the John Carpenter line of thinking, where like, can we just get back to making horror movies that aren't elevated? Can we just make <laughs> like horror movies that are that don't necessarily have a message and are just fun and scary? Like, I'm fine. I'm fine with horror as allegory and a horror with a message. My 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 problem is when it doesn't feel like it's. Like you said, it's 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 very surface level, and it's not necessarily thought through all the way. And, sure. and I I would love to, you know, I, I, this is one of those movies where I didn't. <laughs> I think the worst thing to ever happen to film are are the ending explained uh, or oh like the, those kind of YouTube videos. And, yeah. and and look, I've written some of them for work, <laughs> but <laughs> I I think that the what this was a movie that when it was over, I wanted to know you know the process behind making it i was fascinated by the the production design fascinated by uh rory kinnear's transformations throughout the film mm -hmm. and i wanted to know what alex garland's intent the the author's intent right yeah. and uh, almost every interview i've read with him is just like i don't know what do you think or or him just straight up saying i'm not sure what i meant by that because he's again polishing off a script that's nearly two decades old yeah. and his sensibilities have changed well this this won't make much sense to you but malik will understand like it we've kind of dealt with similar kind of ideas and topics and like enemy sure yeah. where things are left vague and things are like uh you know i can't really explain what that's about but <laughs> If that feels like it's in more capable hands and like really fully addresses the topic. That's the one with the big fucking spider. At the yeah. End. Yeah. yeah. But, but it makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Like it, it makes sense in the context of what you're, of what's happened. Mm -hmm. And like, I don't know this, the, the continuous birthing, I get what he's saying, sure. but I don't know what the resolution is at the end. Right. Do they come to an understanding yeah. or are we, has she killed her guilt and moving on with her life and if so if this is just a you know a psychodrama then why do other characters seem to see and react to it uh it, yeah it, it's just very muddled he's not committing to one thing and it's really frustrating yeah so be sure to like and subscribe <laughs> yeah, and uh, follow us on a uh, reddit.com i like I, I accidentally jumped to my wrap-up notes <laughs> <laughs> i did i did too as a little secret but there's still plenty to talk about and oh, let's start totally. doing that right Right now by discussing the the making of the movie so the year is last year 2022 and oh, that's fucking weird to say it yeah. does right the director as we mentioned is alex garland the movie stars jesse buckley rory kinnear i'm gonna take a leap of faith here uh papa is i'm probably wrong about that um but that's james the husband mm -hmm. and uh gail rankin another movie that we're doing back to back that only has four roles in it. Oh my gosh, you're right. Yeah. Oh my god, is this based on a play? <laughs> oh, I kind of would believe you if you said it. <laughs> I would watch Nathan star in this play. Okay, I'll do my best. I want to see Nathan play every character. <laughs> I, could, I could not find a budget for this movie, but it did manage to gross $10 million worldwide, hmm. um, which feels like it's probably about what the budget cost too, honestly. Hmm. And the movie sits currently at a 69% on Rotten Tomatoes. Noise. I was, about, I was almost about to say I was proud of us for just <laughs> keeping our mouths shut. Son of a bitch. Only 5% more than last week's movie. I uh, This movie is better. Way oh, better. So yes. much better. Un unquestionably. <laughs> uh, let's continue opening our mouths as we talk over the trailer right now. You guys want to do that? Sure. All right. Here we go. I'm wide open. <laughs> oh, God. Also, I'm I'm such a sucker for an English countryside movie. Sure. Do come in. The words I have to say. It's a beautiful house. Would it just be you staying? Excuse me. Mrs. Martin. It is. Roy Kinnear in this movie is the most British man of all time. Oh man. Apple from the garden. Yeah, it was delicious. No, 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 no. Mustn't do that. Forbidden fruit. Oh, God, sorry, I... I I'm I, joking. 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're not far off from his performance in this movie with that. He's so fucking good, though. Yeah. They're, they both are. They're so great. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, performances is the least of my worries in this movie. You're tormented. It feels more like... This fucking score, though, goes hard. Yeah. Yeah. Something happened. My husband went upstairs to our balcony and let himself go. You must wonder why you drove him to it. Gross. Why? I didn't drive him to it. I think it'd be true. But if you had given him the chance to apologize, he'd still be alive. What? Again, I'm like fully engrossed in this imagery. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Mally's right. The score kicks fucking ass. It's great. It's um Ben Salisbury and Jeff Barrow who've done, I think, most of, if not all, of Alex Garland's movies so far. Uh, Jeff Barrow from Portishead, by the way. Mm. What? Yeah. Want to play a game? You hide. I'll see. Okay, that's the, <laughs> the funniest. Baby Colin Robinson. It's the funniest <laughs> shot of the movie to me. Hey, guess what? Hey, you know what? Lars, look, guess what? Harper, can I show you my Roblox? <laughs> if there was a show tune scene in this fucking movie. <laughs> what are you? Oh, boy. Yeah, great trailer. Yeah, great fantastic trailer. trailer. All right. Great trailer. Great my, trailer. <laughs> my first note of the movie is there is no way you'd be able to make eye contact with someone falling off a building like that. No, and, 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 and to the movie's credit, she does like... Hey, bro, don't knock it till you try it. <laughs> oh, you're, hold on. I'll go test it out. Give me a minute. <laughs> um, hey, Priscilla, look at this. Priscilla, go, Priscilla, go stand by the window real quick. <laughs> no, I, I, and to the movie's credit, she does question that through yeah. the whole thing. She's like, am I... Is that revisionist history? Yeah. Am I just feeling guilty yeah it is a great way to start the movie sorry in my head dustin lives on the ground floor which is <laughs> even funnier it is a great way to start the movie though it's beautiful beautifully shot yeah. uh it's off-putting immediately I, that my first notice well this just gets right to it huh yeah yeah if for somehow this movie gets right to it but also stays a long time it just kind of kicks the can a little while right right most of my notes for this movie are just huh yeah <laughs> So Jesse Buckley is uh, playing Harper in this movie. Mm-hmm. She's married to a guy named James. Mm-hmm. She's getting a divorce. We don't know why at the beginning of the movie. And uh, she decides she's going to get away and go to this English countryside. She's rented mm-hmm. uh, a house to stay at. And this movie, if nothing else, is about one thing. And that is the true horrors of staying at an Airbnb. Because <laughs> it's I, I've done it zero times mm. because it seems awful i don't want to stay in your house in your room with probably your cameras that you've set up i uh, know thank you i don't want to do it Which, can we, how fucking good is jesse buckley she's, she's great best. she's fantastic yeah. she is so watchable she mm-hmm. has a great on-screen presence that yeah. feel i don't i never feel her acting right dude she's in i think it's it's season four of the chris rock season of fargo yes yeah. And she's great. Oh, she's so good. That's probably the best part of that season. Honestly, she's so good at it. I love that season. I did too. Well, and there's and there's so much of this movie that is uh, without dialogue, and you're watching her sort of process things. Mm-hmm. And and whenever there's a moment early on in the movie when she goes into the tunnel and she like hears her own voice echoing back, mm-hmm. it's the one of the few times she smiles, and I it's know. like a bomb is going off. It's like it so is. Great. There's so much joy in that moment, and I. Yeah, she's phenomenal. She's the glue. Yeah, no, her her in that moment when she's uh, doing the vocalizations in the tunnel and she's finally smiling for the first time and she's kind of laughing. Mm-hmm. Like She's experiencing wonder and fun again after a traumatic experience. Yeah. And I'm feeling that for her. Like, yes. it, is, it is a beautiful moment of the movie. Honestly, most of the moments in this movie, again, performances are aside. It, like everything is sticking well together except for the plot except for the themes yeah. and everything and it's kind of frustrating because i'm watching a woman go through all these things these horrible things and then seeing literally the light at the end of the tunnel right and i i don't know i wish this movie just held together a little bit more than it does it's a, it's very unfortunate but yeah jesse buckley is not to blame for that she's no. incredible in this movie also unfortunate the worst tv placement i've ever seen right? aside from the room right? <laughs> like when, uh. he's, when he, he's walking them through it's uh yeah it's this is uh, 
uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't want to, if I'm going into an Airbnb, I'm not going to critique someone else's uh, setup, mm-hmm. but I don't care how many brawlies and wellies you have. I want to be able to see the television. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Nah, fuck that. I stayed in Airbnb. I rearranged all the furniture. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'll never fucking do it. Always leave it with better feng shui than you found it. <laughs> I, I would never. Nah, I fuck this shit up. <laughs> TV's on the couch now. What you gonna do? <laughs> We get a little bit of the backstory here. Yeah. We found out that uh, James uh, Harper's wife or husband yeah. uh, wanted a divorce. Different movie, Dustin. <laughs> she wanted a divorce from him because he was clearly very violent and abusive. And this is the second time this season we've had to deal with the bullshit line of I'll kill myself if you leave me. Right. Thrown around because Halloween ends. But he's got real Corey energy in this movie. Ah! Oh, fuck that's right <laughs> well and it's it's uh, a critique i've i've seen leveled at this movie pretty often and I, and I i agree with it is it's it is unfortunate that the only person of color in this movie is an abusive husband yeah yeah, yeah. it's not great like as this movie is tackling these primal truths and fears it's also uh, un- uh, whether it realizes it or not buying into uh, a-, a-, a very uh, unfortunate trope and stereotype at the same time. Yes. Would it make more sense if Rory Kinner also played her husband? I see. I was wondering about that. Like, I'm, I'm like, what? why is it a choice? Like, why that choice? Right. Yeah. Like, why have a different performer there? Especially if the idea is that she's working through her guilt, yeah. then yeah, it would make sense for him to appear uh, like her husband. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, she's created this other personification that's based on someone that we don't recognize. Exactly. Yeah. Hey, or if you're going to have this actor, uh, I-, I can't pronounce his name, but if you're going to have him be the husband, he should show up at the end during the birthing. Right. Like That should be the only time you really see him. Right. And, and yeah, and getting all of these like expository scenes does sort of muddy it, right? Yeah. Because you're like, well, what are, are you telling? Telling us that this is the reason, or are we muddying this further? Yeah, and I, you know, I, I don't know. Not it's it's not meant to be a soapbox moment, but it is just like what it's a. It seems like a very specific choice and an unfortunate one at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. And I will say, as scummy as this character is, yeah. this the fight in this movie between these two feels so real. It like does. it's yeah, it's blue Valentine level authentic. Mm. Yes. Like I the the dialogue is is crisp and perfect for them, but it also feels genuine yeah. and like the manipulation is is so layered mm-hmm. and it's it's exactly what it needs to be. This guy never he somehow feels big but never over the top. And he he really like he almost has me for a second. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's the point, right? Because he says, he says, you're not divorcing me. You're divorcing how I've been for the last year. And yes. there's a, there's an implication that this is someone who is maybe dealing with mental, uh, mental health issues, right? Yeah. But he, he turns it on her immediately. Like e- even before he elaborates, there's no changes in his, in his expression when he says, I'll kill myself and you'll have to live with it being your fault. Yeah. And it gets to a point too, where he's like, you know, you didn't, we, we took vows. Uh, we literally said in sickness and in health and all that stuff. And right. it's, it's classic behavior, but yes. it also is like, I don't know, there, there is an argument to that, right? Like, obviously, if you're being in an abusive relationship, get, get out, out as soon as you can. Absolutely. But we, at this point, we don't know what that is until he says that line. So it is like, you're right, he does almost have you for a second yes. of like, you took vows, you got to work through this shit, but then I'll kill myself if you leave. No, the, the movie the movie allows us to be manipulated along with her. Yeah, it's, it's a really interesting way and a really smart way to do that. But- I don't know. I just, I I wish the rest of the movie was this good. (laughs) It's unfortunate. But yeah, no. So he says, I'll kill myself if you leave. You'll have to live with that. And it did get into an interesting conversation because Priscilla and I were watching this movie. She said, if I said something like that to you, how would you feel? And I was like, well, if I was the receiving end of that, you know, if we were in a bad fight and you're like, I'll kill myself if you leave. Yeah. I would feel nothing more than just anger, I think. Because it is. A, it's an abusive thing to do, obviously, to put that kind of goats on somebody. She goes, well, what if I actually did it then? And I did kill myself. I'm like, I would feel even more angry. I was like, there wouldn't be sorrow other than what was lost. But I would be so, it would be so petty. It would be so, (laughs) like, I don't know. And the implication is that, in fact, he didn't mean to do it. Yeah. Right? Like, he was acting uh, rash and and fell. Yeah. And so, she has to deal with that ambiguity the rest of her life. And that's a piece of ambiguity that works for me in this movie. Yeah. Because it is, it's, it's destructive. Even if he wasn't consciously being destructive, and I, but uh, you know, but again, you could argue that he is. I, I saw someone on on uh, on online mentioned that is it possible that like because she locked him out, he went up to like the upstairs neighbors and tried to like climb down their balcony and then slipped and fell. Well, that's, that's what she says. That's what she says happened. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. okay. I yeah. must have missed that part. 
Okay. Yeah, she said he he go he forced his way into the upstairs apartment to try to get back into our apartment, and then he slipped. But I can't stop. You know, she she implies that she's still not sure if he slipped or if he threw himself, so she would see him. Right. Well, and again, that's just so crazy. Yeah. Like it would be a split second you wouldn't see him. <laughs> right. Right. Like you'd see a blur. <laughs> Which can you imagine? Like in that slow motion of him falling, he looks in the window. She's not there. He's just like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Or in slow motion, she just looks at him, closes the blinds. <laughs> <laughs> she gives him the double birds like Rachel Weisz did last week. <laughs> God damn it. Can we stop talking about shape of this? <laughs> <laughs> we can talk about the shape of this tunnel. She goes for a walk in the woods and, you know, in the pre in the previous scene, Jeffrey has told her, you know, oh, it the you know, if you want to go to town, it's a short walk away. Mm-hmm. And the woods are significantly more foreboding and treacherous yeah. than he made it sound. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. This this tunnel is incredible. Like just a great location. Yeah, I'm almost convinced it's a matte painting. Like halfway through. Oh, I mean, <laughs> it's impossibly long, right? It's so long. Like and and Alex Garland. I mean, I'm thinking when I see the the silhouette at the end of the tunnel stand up and shriek and start running towards her, and it seems like he's going nowhere. Like, oh my god, it's scary as hell. Yeah, yeah. But I'm also getting. Starts, I'm getting lots of um, like flashes of like 28 days later. Yeah. Like it feels, it's so good. There's something so simple about a silhouette shrieking and running at you. It's just, it's terrifying. Well, and a silhouette that looks like it could just be a tree branch on the ground yeah. until it moves. Yeah. I, I, this is the first time in the movie I wrote down, I stopped breathing. And then this thing at the end of the tunnel screeches, it caws at her. And I, could not handle it. <laughs> Once again, another moment where you could take that scream out and just put in any dialogue of Kenny Powers. <laughs> <laughs> or that uh, that video of Miss World going, France! <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. It was actually kind of interesting because as we were watching this movie, Priscilla had already seen it before, and so she was kind of scrolling through her phone. Yeah. And she was trying to show me a video of, uh, hey, do you know what foxes sound like when they're angry? And it was like a shrieking sound. And then this guy made the exact same sound at the same time. <laughs> oh, wow. It was terrifying. <laughs> the video that uh when they they figured out how the mummy would sound because oh. they reconstructed his vocal cords yes. and it's just like oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we get uh harper tries to get out of the forest mm-hmm. she gets out she sees this nice uh, old landscape and this old de- decrepit building she tries to take a picture of it and then there's just a naked guy there he is. completely hairless except for his pubes mm-hmm. more pubic talk this week by the way yeah um Hanging dong. Cuts all over his body. He's got eat tattooed on the inside of his, uh, <laughs> his pelvic m- muzzle. Which is that? So is that supposed to be the same thing from the tunnel? I yeah, think I think so. so. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we can't tell because the guy in the tunnel is silhouetted, so you can't tell. True. I'm so on edge at this point because, like, the, in the soundtrack, there there are multiple times in the movie where I'm like, I don't know if I meant if this is diegetic or if this is music. Mm-hmm. Like, there are moments where I was like, is he screeching again or is this like a sting? Yeah, it's it's really well done it's great then we find we get a visual of what happened to her husband when he fell off the building uh impaled right. oh. oh my god it's a great effect like his arm is on a uh, impaled on like a a, a, f- a spiked fence mm-hmm. he's broken his leg uh his foot is like off basically he's covered in blood yeah she's seeing it for the first time mm-hmm. oh i guess we kind of gloss over some stuff so she she goes to this this house in the in the cottage mm-hmm. and she's m- introduced uh, to the homeowner, Jeffrey, who gives her a tour of the place. And like you said, there's some microaggressions here. He mm-hmm. won't let her bring her own bags in, but then complains uh, as he's doing it. Tells her, uh, ladies have to be careful about what they flush here. Yeah, uh, yeah. make sure you're not flushing no tampons down the toilet. Asks her, uh, where's your husband? Yes. Mm-hmm. And she says, oh, well, I, I haven't changed my name uh, yet. Yeah. Or changed the Ms. to Mrs. or whatever. To his credit... Does not press on that at all. No, that was, it was kind of nice this time on the rewatch because I, I know where the movie's going. Right. Like, oh, this guy is, he is just, a, it's a genuine curiosity. Right. And then he, he, he fucks off <laughs> out of the, out of the house. Yeah. Uh, she goes through all that shit. And then the next morning, Tally-ho. the next morning, uh, is where we get a reveal of what the movie is truly about, which is one thing mm. the horrors of brushing your teeth too aggressively while using an electric toothbrush. Oh my gosh. <laughs> because right. I, I was like, you don't have to brush that hard. It's an electric one, lady. It's, it's okay. moving. Yeah, it's, it's doing it for you. And she's like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It was a good little laugh for me. Um, 
we get more backstory about the uh, the fight that uh, her and her husband had, mm-hmm. and she's typing on her phone, telling her friend that she's afraid of him. Yeah. He s- takes the phone from her, and he says, you're scared of me, I'm scared of you. Another <laughs> classic abusive uh, tactic there. Yeah. And uh, he hits her really, really hard. Yep. And, um, and she says, get the fuck out. <laughs> mm-hmm. She pushes him out, and uh, she's in a church at this point in uh, the present day, mm-hmm. and she just- this this yell that she gives in this church, yeah, it's so perfect because it's the exact same pitch of the wailing that's in the score. It's perfect. Well, this this comes after she calls the police on on the man outside. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Glossing over so much stuff. Yeah, yeah. So the naked guy tries to come and break into the house that she's in that she <laughs> saw earlier. That, no, no, no. I'm keeping it exact. I said it like that on purpose. Okay. And uh, anyway, he arrives. He arrives. Uh, the police arrive. He he's coming up there, and uh, they arrest him. This whole sequence is terrifying. Because she's she's giving her friend the tour on FaceTime, mm-hmm. and the this naked man is walking back and forth outside the windows, and you're just waiting for the bomb to go off. For we're waiting for the moment when she finally sees him out of the corner of her eye. It's a Michael Myers move. Like it he's is. just stalking behind like outside behind her. It's pretty great. Yeah. But yeah, they're like, oh, he uh didn't resist arrest at all. And then you see uh briefly so the he's side. He's probably fine, right? Yeah. <laughs> you see briefly the side of one of the officer's faces looks a lot like Jeffrey. Yeah. Um which she kind of notices a little bit. And then yeah, they they haul the guy off. And like I said, we're getting the back a little more of the backstory about uh, her and her ex husband's relationship. Mm-hmm. He punches her, and she's at a church at this point. And she releases this uh, guttural scream that, like I said, it's it's matching the pitch of the score perfectly, which I love. Yes, she she harmonizes with the score when she screams. Yeah. It's a it's an incredible moment. It's great, and this is a thing you do when when someone dies, even if it's not like uh, you know that you you always think about. The last conversation you had. Oh, you, yeah. you always get angry about you're mad at yourself about everything you've ever said. Mm-hmm. And she has all of this extra guilt that it was projected on her exactly. because of the things he said to her. Yes, exactly. It's it's this is like textbook sociopathic and abusive behavior. Mm-hmm. Like it's of course putting all the guilt on her and now he's not around to defend her. Uh, you know, for her, her to explain things and things like that. So, and I feel like all of the impact of this scene is suddenly like kicked out the window when we see Baby Colin Robinson show up. <laughs> Why does she not at this moment? Like, hey, you're a little boy with a you're you're a teenage boy with a you know 55 year old man's face. <laughs> yes. So she goes outside. There's this little kid. He's got like a, a Marilyn Monroe plastic mask thing on his face. Uh-huh. Wants to play hide and seek with her. She says no, and he calls her stupid bitch. Yeah, it's like wow. Yeah, it escalates. <laughs> wow. Okay. When man, when he takes that mask off, it really takes me out of the movie yeah, for a minute. It is so uncanny. It's so uncanny. <laughs> it's not a great effect. No, <laughs> but but this is the part where like she clearly like notices something is off about this kid, but right. then. The priest approaches, also looks exactly like Jeffrey, and she makes no note of it. Like, What's no- interesting, though, is the little kid version has the same bright green eyes mm-hmm. as the naked man, mm-hmm. but the priest has, like, pitch black eyes, yep. and then I don't, really, I don't really pick up on how the others look, other than Jeffrey has, like, super ruddy, like, Timothy Spall cheeks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then the, the, she sits down with the priest and she's, she, you know, he says, I heard you crying. Uh, you know, you're clearly going through some stuff. Mm-hmm. And she kind of briefly explains the, the past with her and her, her ex husband. And if this movie is about one thing, it's about this, mm. which is, oh God, you got to stop putting your hand on people that didn't ask for it. Don't touch a stranger. Yeah. Don't touch a stranger. I had this happen to me, uh, recently. Mm. I was in Walmart. I was trying to get down an aisle. Well, don't go to Walmart. That's, that's, that's what I've learned from this story, <laughs> by the way. But I, I uh, was trying to walk down the aisle. He was blocking it. Mm-hmm. He noticed me. He goes, he uh, he stepped aside. And he was like, "Sorry about that, buddy," and patted me on the back. Nope. And I about snapped. Don't I about fucking, about 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 fucking lost it. I, I almost did at this fucking Walmart, but uh, yeah, never going back again because of that one guy. So, but you can see he puts his hand on her knee, and you can see her fully shut down. Like she was almost ready to have a conversation yeah. about this, and like it's the first time that she's really opened up to anybody uh, besides her friend Riley. And the second he touches her, she's just like, okay, I'm fucking done. Like, that's it. Yeah, this this conversation is wild. The fact that he's like, you must wonder why you drove him to kill himself. Oof. Oof. Right. Oof. Ugh. And then the worst part of it, too, is after he struck you, did you give him a chance to apologize? Fuck right off. Yeah, the absolute wrong things to say to someone. Mm-hmm. 
Especially coming from a clergyman. Like, it's just, it's not good. Yeah. It's not good at all. But she rightfully tells this priest to fuck off, which is, if, it's got to feel cathartic to do that. Uh-huh. Oh, it's got to feel good. You'll get to someday. I, I hope so. It's on my bucket list. <laughs> she, uh, she goes back to the cottage and she calls her friend up and says, Oh, wait, did, she goes to the bar right here after, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, she goes to the bar. Oh, I, we, one of my favorite bits, though, the vicar says, I noticed you just now in the church. And I'm like, no shit, yeah. she's screaming her head off in there. She's the only one in there and she was screaming. Yeah. Kind of hard to miss. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's very hard to miss. She goes to the pub. Jeffrey's there. The bartender's there. It looks like Jeffrey. There's Five other Rory's are there. Yeah. yeah. Two, two other guys that look like him. The police officer comes in and she's she's like, hey, uh, sorry about what happened earlier today. And she, and she goes, oh, I'm just glad you guys arrested him. And he's like, yeah, but we had to let him go. Yeah. She's like, fucking why? She goes, well, he wasn't really doing anything wrong, was he? He was just kind of walking around. Yeah. He seemed harmless. And she said, well, he was stalking me. I saw him twice. And he says, well, I don't think he even saw you once. Ugh. I'm like, dude, <laughs> it's, again, it's so obvious. Yeah. Like, it's so surface level. And I, I, that's fine. But then do something else with the, with this, with these themes. And right. do something else with this this plot. Well, and and that's that's the thing, right? Like, you you don't really get any resolution to that. When, no. the, when the police officer shows up again, it's just as one of the many faces, right? Yeah. He, he's one of the stalkers. And I... I I just, yeah, I mean, I, I do love that, like, yeah, she gets blown off, which is something that I feel like every woman can identify with yeah. whenever they, you know, th- th- this is, he, she she literally reports someone for stalking her, and they do not care, and the second she steps outside the pub, she hears him again. Can I tell you another movie from last year that does this better? Okay. Barbarian. Yes. Oh, yeah. Does this exact same thing better. Well, and that, that's, yeah, but that's. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I have my own issues with the fact that everyone in Barbarian is a cartoon character, but sure, <laughs> sure. that's another episode for sure. That's fine. Yeah, so she goes back to the house. Uh, he, the, the the stalking man, is out there because we see him uh, appear from behind a tree, which was great. She she gets home and she turns on every lamp. Yeah, I, I just I love that. Yeah. I love that detail. She's just like I am not taking any. I'm not leaving anything to chance. It's great. And as she calls she calls a friend up, and I gotta say, man, her friend Riley's a fucking ride or die. I love she Riley. Says, How many hours is this drive? Yeah. Four. I'll do it in three. Yeah, <laughs> it's great. I'll be there soon. We're gonna party. You're gonna be happy this is the one thing that you wanted and i'm not letting them take it from you yeah she's great it's great and she's like it's not fair that some creep is ruining this for you right. i love it it's great and she goes outside because she sees the police officer out there standing in the garden uh-huh. and he's not saying anything to her uh we get the the motion detector light flicks on and off and he's gone yes the apples fall from the tree but not very far from the tree hey, right? hey, God, is that worthy it. of a cheer i, I don't know i, was, I don't, I don't know. know probably not there we go. That's <laughs> somewhere in the middle there. Okay. Um, the hybrid. By the way, I just realized uh, Riley, uh, Gail Rankin, this actress, I, I I recognized her because she was Sheila the She-Wolf on Glow. Oh, yeah. Uh, who I loved. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> the guy sprinting from the garden to the house is so good. It's so it's scary. so scary. And I love her reaction because she goes inside, shuts the door. And she yells, why are you doing this? But it's so much more an angered, like, call than it is being afraid. Like, uh-huh. she's so over this shit. Yeah. What is the deal here? And uh, as the audience member, I'm asking the same question. Yeah. You're kind of like, well, what what the fuck is going on? <laughs> Someone tries to break in by throwing a, a chair through the, the window. Uh-huh. She grabs a kitchen knife. And then Jeffrey shows up. I do like this because someone's banging on the front door. She says, I got a weapon and I will fucking use it. And mm-hmm. then Jeffrey opens the door like, no, 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 what's hey, all this uh, damsel in distress. I'm here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but then he, t- he touches on this idea that like, this is a, this kind of aggression is passed down. I mean, he talks about how his dad, you know, pu- you know, pushed him to react in unsafe and cavalier ways. Like the reason he's like, just going right out there to, to confront Whoever the attacker is, mm-hmm. is because he was raised to think if he didn't, he he's less than, you know? Yeah, the line he has is probably the funniest line in the movie to me, which he says, hey, she's explaining someone tried to break in and just unprompted, he says, you have precisely the qualities of a failed military man. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. She says, what? Jesus. Wild line. He says, oh, my father told me that. I was only seven. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> great. It's a great delivery, too. But she he, she goes in the kitchen, or he goes in the kitchen and notices, oh, it's not a guy that's trying to break in. A bird just broke through the window, mm-hmm. and it's a, a crow. He breaks the crow's neck to, to euthanize it. And then, uh, yeah, he, he fucks off outside to uh, see what the dis- cause of disturbance is mm-hmm. with, in the most British way possible. Like, I don't know what you're getting on out here, but it won't go far with me. Right. <laughs> most... <laughs> 
unthreatening uh, voice of all time, probably. And then, yeah, we kind of get into the endish part of the movie. Like the whole third act is mostly in this house, pretty much. Yeah, very hallucinogenic. the The man, the naked man, shows up again, and now he has thorns and leaves growing from him. Mm-hmm. Like motherfucker went and decided to cosplay as the Green Knight. Now I'm the Green Knight. I, wrote I was that just down about too. to say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but she like breathes in a spore, and the man tries to like force his way through the the letter. I mean, this this scene is insane. Yeah the 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 mail slot on the door. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh. Why don't you take? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's this it's this. Fucks his arm up the same way that her husband's arm was fucked. He up. does, yes. but she she sta- she makes the choice to stab it and cut his hand in half, basically. Yeah, she he puts his arm through the letterbox slot. She takes a kitchen knife, stabs him in uh, in the forearm. Yes, and it kind of locks him in place because right. the Ooh. knife's in there. He can't get it out, so he Ugh. drags his hand back through the letterbox, thereby bifurcating his arm. Yeah, all the way up to the palm, all the way to the fingers. I had to look away. It's a good I effect. Had to look away. It's so it's so, it's really well done, and it made me sick to my stomach <laughs> it's one of the few parts of the movie that are genuinely horror like yeah. it's 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 grotesque it's it's very effective but then you know the door does open and it's a different guy he chases up to the stairs to the bathroom then it's the priest again they all have the the bifurcated arm mm-hmm. yep. at this point it is a little goofy because he puts one half on each side of her I neck i think that is so <laughs> effective it's good but it's kind of good it's kind of goofy yeah like a little it, it is but it is terrifying yeah. it's such a i mean it's in, it's intense body horror for sure and he's just spouting off at the mouth uh you know about like oh this is all on you you you've done this basically and she stabs him in the gut and runs outside to to get in her car to she's like fuck this i'm out and she runs over jeffrey in the car and it's kind of unintentionally hilarious yeah. it's a good dummy work like she rolls over this guy hard and he drags her out of the car and then just drives away it's like a grand theft auto move it's so <laughs> fucking funny <laughs> and then it cuts to like the, the car's coming back like he's gonna run her over and it just cuts to jeffrey in the car screaming screaming yep. it's the funniest part of the movie yeah. holy oh, shit 100 <laughs> it's truly wild he's just like ah! <laughs> And tries to run her over, but crashes the car. And this kicks in the final scenes of the movie. Nate, uh, Mally, do you want to recap what happens here at the end of the movie? I can fucking try. So, yeah, he crashes the car, whatever. So, fucking Greenleaf man, Mm -hmm. he's fucking back. (laughs) And he has, like, he has a broken leg Mm -hmm. or something. Um, which is another one of James's injuries. Mm-hmm. Yep. And <laughs> how do I describe this? I mean, I, I mean, you haven't watched it recently, so it makes sense. <laughs> no, I'm just trying to think of how to describe. I mean, it gives birth, I guess. Yeah. To if I get the order right, he gives birth to the kid. Yep. And then the kid gives birth to the priest, uh-huh. and then. Jeff. Well, what you, when you say give birth. Yeah, um, that's why I was like, I don't I know like, if that's the correct term. I think it's the green man's belly button. He climbs out of the navel at one point, yes. and then the, the last one is forced out of the mouth. Yeah, that's it's right. feet first out of the mouth. Which is a, a truly unbelievable effect. It's yes. great. It is so so good it's great this this all looks great it one just, of them crawls out like emerges from the their back right. almost like a cocoon type situation mm-hmm. uh-huh. the movie cocoon yes, yes. <laughs> a lot of similarities oh yeah you got a boner <laughs> <laughs> if this movie is about one thing it's about the true horrors of giving birth if you are erect during this scene if you <laughs> seek help <laughs> Um, but anyway, the last one that comes out is her dead husband. Yep. And then they just have a little chat on the couch. Yeah. Which is it's such a weird transition. <laughs> I just want you to love me. Like, she's like, what do you want? Yeah. He, sh- he says, your love. And she goes, yeah. <laughs> it's a good, it's a good little delivery. But and, well, and then we just cut to the friend mm-hmm. who drives up to the house and just finds her sitting in the backyard. Yep. And then the movie's just fucking done. Yeah. Are we to assume that then she killed the resurrected Jamie? I don't know. So here's here's a lot to talk about here at the ending. I think, and also the friend's pregnant. Yeah. And I feel like that's supposed to mean something, uh-huh. but I don't know if it was supposed to or not. I mean the. 
the the surface level English lit one hundred one interpretation <laughs> of that is yes yeah, she killed the you know she got finally got rid of James and dealt with all that right but she's going to see the same toxic things in other pe- like other people like right killing one life does not prevent the a new life from beginning basically tell that to the Terminator <laughs> oh <laughs> good boy. damn good boy. I think this ending would work so much better because it 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 kind of drags its feet with all these continuous births right. there's like seven different ones. I feel like it's just too much and it goes on for a little bit too long to the point where it gets comical. Yeah, after the second one, I'm not really shocked anymore. Uh-huh. Uh, this is why, like, the, the wine, swirling wine glass ladies in my screening is like, yeah, I, I kind of agree with you at this point. This is going on too long. It's too comical. Right. But I, yeah, I think the interpretation is yes, that I think she just, she kills the rebirth James here and now that's why she's smiling at the, It's a very, it's not, it's not as impactful, but it's like a ready or not ending where she's just covered in blood sitting there at the end. Like, right. yeah. Like, if I feel like if they had like the green man show up, give birth to something, it chases her around a little bit yeah. and then another birth and it's like, I, something. It, just having all the births back to back is just kind of like, okay. And, yeah. she, and she's not reacting. She's just watching, yeah. which is, it makes it kind of uninteresting. That's a problem, right? Yeah. Well, no, I, I, I find that to be a problem because it, it just feels like she is. She's just the the audience surrogate at that point in the movie. Yeah. Like this is so close to being a good for her ending. Yeah, but I'm still not sure. I, yeah, it it, just, it really loses me in the last ten to fifteen minutes. Yeah, yeah. Like once once the green man shows back up again. Yeah, well, that's why I feel like the movie like Alex Garland had that idea yeah. and then was like, oh, I need to write some way to get to that. I mm-hmm. need to write a movie here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And he is turning it. He, he does represent the green man, which is like a folklore. Uh, yeah. uh, I, I don't know the full extent of it, but that's what he's supposed to be there. One thing I did notice, and I have to go back and rewatch to confirm it, but does anyone know this ending credit song, like this kind of folksy acoustic guitar song? I meant I, to look it up, and I, yeah, I'm not sure. I am almost confident of this, that that same song is played in the opening scene. Yes. And it's sung by a female group, and here at the end, it's sung by all males. Yes. I, yeah. I did notice that. Uh, what's I don't know. I have to look it up. In first ending credit song love song by elton john i don't think it was Elton john though Mm-mm. uh I'll, I'll try and look it up i mean that's what this website's telling me I mean, it might be but yeah that's that's pretty much the end of the movie it's uh all this shit apparently really did happen because uh her friend riley sees evidence of like a break-in and everything mm-hmm. but it's kind of ambiguous of what to make like what what did harper deal with here at the end did she kill the rebirth james was that even a real thing that happened or according like- to alex garland it is mm-hmm. but it yeah it, it, it is it's one of those things where i'm just not 100 percent sure what she's accomplished at the end and and what we're meant to to take from it i mean mm. there, there is all of the all of the themes we've been discussing throughout the episode but in terms of the narrative what are we saying right it also does look like it was Elton John, and yep. then the opening was the same song by sung by Leslie Duncan. Yep. Okay. So nice. It, it is a nice little uh, book in there. I did yeah, like that inversion there. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I just don't. I don't know how what I'm supposed to feel at the end of this movie. Mm-hmm. It's like, what is the the message? Is well, it? It's it's kind of how I feel about another movie from last year. Don't worry, darling. I was mm-hmm. like, I feel like did y'all cut the ending scene? Right. Yeah, that movie doesn't have an ending, so no. I don't know what you're supposed to feel. I'm still watching it to this day. <laughs> so. Yeah, I pushed play. It played all the way through, and it won't fucking stop playing. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I don't know what Alex Garner is trying to. What the point he's trying to get across here and. I don't know also if the movie is trying to say if there's anything as a guy I can do to not put women in this same situation other than just don't be abusive, Mm -hmm. right? Like, I don't know what, I don't know. I don't know what the message is or or what the lesson to be learned here is. Again, really wish we had a female guest on this episode. Well, I can, I can see if, uh, if Priscilla wants to come in and give her thoughts, but I asked her earlier. Nah, I'm good. (laughs) I asked her earlier. She just said, yeah, I'll tell you my thoughts right now. Men are bad. I'm like, yeah, I got it. Got it. <laughs> All right. Well done, Priscilla. <laughs> I don't know. I, uh, ladies, uh, listeners here, if you've got thoughts on this movie, please fill us in. Because uh-huh. Do we miss something? Do we get something wrong? What are we supposed to take from this ending? Because I, I, apparently Alex Carlin doesn't even know. So I don't know what I'm supposed to think here. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think uh, my little wrap up here about this movie, I think it's a well-made movie, but I think it it's a first draft. Mm-hmm. It's not fully finished. It's not fully realized. Maybe this would be a time where some studio notes would have been would have benefited. You know, right? Uh, go for the less ambiguous ending and get like a, something a little more traditional. 
I don't know. But there are people that fucking love this movie, and that's totally fine. I think it's a good movie. It just doesn't entirely it, it doesn't entirely satisfy m- my need for an ending yeah. at the end of the day. Uh, and I think that's uh, and I don't know if that's a failing on my part. It could be. I, I maybe I need to meet the movie in the middle, but I've watched it twice now and I I I think it is re- like you said very well made. It's extremely compelling. It's well acted. Uh, the music is unbelievable. So good. Yeah, I'm. I don't. I don't hate that I watched it. Yeah. I just. Uh, I, I. I find. I find it to be more problematic than I think it realizes it is. Sure. At, uh, at points. I, I think a 69 percent Rotten Tomato score is pretty accurate. That's that's about that's about right. Pretty nice. <laughs> God damn it, Nathan. <laughs> that that was you that time. <laughs> Why? Do you, do you guys have any other notes about the movie before we jump into Prop Cop and all that? No, I accidentally read most of my ending notes yeah. at the beginning of the episode. Me too, me too. Yeah, so we we can we can skip over all of Nathan's wrap-up bits. <laughs> all right. Well, let's talk about Prop Cop. And for new listeners of the show, Prop Cop is where we look at uh, the movie that we just talked about, Men. And we look at all the props in the movie, all the tangible items, the physical attributes. And we pick one each for ourselves for our hypothetical uh, prop collection, our prop warehouse here. Mally, since this is your pick for this week, uh, why don't you tell me what prop you want from the movie Men? Oh, I want the house. Just the whole house. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Okay. It's a nice place. Yeah, no, I don't I don't disagree. I would th- what, you don't want a vacation house in the fucking English countryside, you fucking idiot? Uh yeah, I don't. I don't want that. No, thank you. I England it always looks so dreary and and wet and damp and I'm okay. You live in Florida. I know it's the exact opposite. It's tropical. Here. Uh it's definitely <laughs> wet. It sure is. Uh Nathan, what about you? What prop do you want? I'll take the stained glass window from the church. No, oh, that's huh. that's a good one. I mean, we didn't really get to see it at its at its full glory. Jeffrey describes it as a miracle. I want to see that. I want to see a miracle. Yeah. A miracle. <laughs> a miracle. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, Mal, you may be taking the house, but I'm taking one artifact from that house, and mm. that is, I want I want the chessboard that he has on there. It's a nice looking chessboard. Oh, yeah. Nice chessboard. Do you know how to play chess? I do. Oh, okay. I'm actually not terrible at it, either. Mm. You should go play the robot that broke that kid's hand. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> what a great story. I like when kids get hurt, but they don't get maimed. Yes. Uh, is a broken finger a maiming? No. It's not great. <laughs> don't, don't, don't recover from that. <laughs> Um, did you just steal Nathan's bit? I did. I'm just, I'm just joking. Speaking of bits, why don't we talk about bit parts here? This will be interesting because we're all basically playing Rory Kinnear. Uh-huh. But, uh, oh, I got mine locked and loaded. Me too. I'm going to guess what both of yours are. <laughs> Go for it. Because I feel like we all picked the same one. <laughs> it's the blonde be molded version of him yep. in the pub, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Okay. Yep. <laughs> no, I picked. I want I want to be the bartender with the dirtbag goatee. Oh, oh Nathan. Go. Always got to be fucking different. With the uh, fisherman's goatee. The fucking Scott Ian from Anthrax <laughs> goatee. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> There you go. Now the blonde be molded guy. It was. It was. Uh, I, I kind of gasped when I saw <laughs> that. That was great. The one that looks like Simple Jack. Oh, a little bit. He does. He sure does. Yeah. He's a little bit. Like DC, like clock that guy. I was like, I'm hey, just gonna lock in that haircut yeah. for 2023. <laughs> <laughs> I I went. I took my kids to the park today. So many mullets, dude. They're back, <laughs> and I'm loving it. Yeah, I'm loving it. And not like good clean mullets either. Like mm. Jerry curl, like <laughs> white trash mullets. It's awesome. Do you have a mullet right now, DC? I don't. I don't. I'm, I'm pretty clean cut. Yeah. You don't one? I kind of do. <laughs> I asked Priscilla, I was like, can we cut our son's hair like that? And she's like, absolutely not. <laughs> so why don't we uh, get into our silver linings for the movie Men? Because mm. I don't think we can give a silver lining to actual men. Sure. But, uh, yeah. Who wants to go first? Riley didn't have to watch the birth parade. Damn, Damn it. it. There you go. <laughs> I like birth parade. That's a good. That's a good name for that. I I put that Harper had a very therapeutic experience. Did she? Uh, I mean, that's certainly one read. I mean, the, but the smile, the smile at the end. Mm-hmm. I take that as she's she, she had a catharsis right there. That's so. true. Uh, Mally, do you got anything? Nathan stole mine. <laughs> I have a third one, if it maybe is helpful. Mm, I doubt it, but what is it? <laughs> I would say that based on what the movie is telling me at the end here, James is gone for good. Mm. I guess. I mean, there's not much else. To, the only other thing I could think of is uh, Harper didn't have to pay her tab at the pub when she went because <laughs> Jeffrey paid for it. There mm. you go. So, <laughs> True. I, I got nothing else. <laughs> Well, how about this? You know, we watch movies all the time on the show that don't uh, particularly end well or mm-hmm. in a beat manner. We always like to give people an alternative, a double feature, uh, something that they can pair with this movie to balance things out a little bit better. I'll go ahead and go first. Mm-hmm. I went with another movie with uh, the main actor playing multiple roles. I'm going with Nutty Professor 2, Meet the Clunt. No, I'm <laughs> oh not. Oh, my God. But I am going to go with 
Austin Powers and the Spy Who Shagged Me. The second nice, one. interesting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, also dealing with problematic men in that movie. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> And yeah, I, I think the Austin Power movies are a lot of fun. So, Nathan, what about you? Pick me up. Uh, yeah, I also actually went with a movie where an actor plays multiple roles. Mm. And that is also about how uh, men fucking drop the ball on everything. Dr. Strangelove or how I learned to stop worrying and love the bomb. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's no finding in the war room. Just so you know. <laughs> Probably my favorite line for that movie. Uh, Mally, what about you? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, Secret of the Ooze. Nice. Any particular reason? Someone sent a gif of it the other day and it made me want to watch it. Oh, it's yeah. Movie. That's, yeah. That's literally yeah, the yeah. only reason. Oh, yeah. That. <laughs> yeah, y- yeah. 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 I think there's some combat cold cuts in this movie, too. I, yes, yeah. there are. There sure are. <laughs> yeah. Oh. You got to wax on, wax off. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to order a pizza. I just did. Just, <laughs> <laughs> just so you know, I just did. That's all I got for this movie. Do we recommend men? I, I would. I think it's, I think it is worth a watch. I think it's oh, for worth, sure. It's, it's worth seeing it for the conversations that can come from it as well. I, sure. I, I it's, it's really well made it, despite my gripes with it. I, I think it's definitely worth a watch. It's fucking Alex Garland. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yes. Check it out. And you owe it to yourself to watch it and form your own opinion as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Even Alex Garland's worst movie is still better than most theatrically released movies. Like, <laughs> it's just a fact at this point. Like, I this is my least favorite of his movies, sure. but uh, it's still way more watchable. And you're right, you you should at least watch it once to have your own thoughts about it. But mm-hmm. I think one and done. I don't think you get much on a rewatch, right? And I will say it's only a hundred minutes. Yeah. So even if it feels like a long hundred minutes, you'll be out of there like just over an hour and a half. So way to do math, bud. <laughs> yeah. Anything else before we uh we wrap it up for the week? You know what? I'll throw I'll throw another cool down in there because uh-huh. uh, he wrote uh he wrote and did some uncredited directing on 2012's Dread. Mm, yes. Yes. And, and that movie is a real fun time. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. And uh, apparently him and Danny Boyle are trying to get this other 28 Days sequel off the ground. So oh, we'll yeah, see. that's right. Oh, I would I would love that. We'll see how that goes. And I'll, I'll say one last time, I, I'm i totally on board with elevated horror movies, but yes. I still would just really like some, uh, some alternatives that are just goofy fun. It sure. seems like Megan may be that, but we'll <laughs> see. I haven't seen it yet. It is a fucking blast. I'd say I, I have heard nothing but good things. Same thing. I'm sh- kind of shocked, honestly. <laughs> it's really fun. It's really dumb, okay. but it's uh, it's uh, it's a good time. Would you say it's on par with something like Malignant or not uh, that good? I would say, I mean, it's the same screenwriter. I would say there are moments that are almost on par with Malignant, okay. but I, I, yeah, Malignant just holds a very special place in my heart. Of course, of course. It, it, for me, it holds a special place on the back of my head. So, um, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Give yourself the fucking applause, yeah, man. That's, that's good. That's that's really, yeah, okay. it is. It is. And also... Oh my god, thank you guys so much for this chant. I, I don't deserve it, but... Oh, Holly, I thought they were saying Kumite. Yeah, oh, god, I gotta put Kumite on the soundboard now that you said that. Well, listener, if you watch the movie Men and you completely fucking disagree with what we have to say and you want to lash out, you can do that. Sure. By emailing us at the Silver Linings Playlist at gmail.com, or you can DM us over on Twitter or Instagram. You can follow us on those two places, as well as on TikTok, where we're blowing up. I still can't believe that. Mm-hmm. I can't either. I can't either. I appreciate it, though, very much so. And... If you haven't already, please, as you know, we'd like to tell you on every podcast episode, subscribe, rate, and leave some feedback for us wherever you're listening to this, and uh, tell your friends and family about the show. We'd really appreciate it. Uh, now, we are moving on to next week's episode, and uh, Mally, this one is uh, also your pick. Yeah. I'm hoping you'll have a clue for us. Oh, yeah. I mean, we just, we gonna keep this fucking A24 trainer rolling, you know what I'm saying? All right. All right. Chugga, chugga, choo, choo. Yeah. Running in an A24 train. God damn Another A24 movie from last year as well. Yeah. Oh. So, very limited <laughs> scope of what we could be talking about. <laughs> some some have called it the modern day So I Married an Axe Murderer. Mm. Yeah. It's definitely got that X factor, I'll tell you mm. that. It's a very enjoyable movie. Anything else, uh, fellas, before we uh, close up shop? Nah. I'm good. All right. Well, uh, rest in peace, oatmeal. And uh, as always, <laughs> I wasn't even going to bother doing it because I knew you were going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Excelsior. 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 Oh. Look it up.
Jesus Christ, that was a long one. Uh, anyway, if you're still here, thanks for listening. And remember, you can always check out our back catalog for over 100 episodes of the show. Like, subscribe, and leave feedback if you want. And tune in next week for another one. Laters.